All right, um, so who am I? I am Martin Nozick. I am an always optimistic and open-minded, knowledge-seeking, full-stack developer, uh, passionate about the UI and UX, and always changing things for the better, or I strive for it. And um, I do a lot of things in my free time. So besides working here at Nodes recently, um, I am also started game development four weeks ago um, having the Wafer Berlin meetup in Berlin because I'm coming from Berlin actually. I'm just visiting for three months, Denmark. I'm writing articles on Medium about Vapor, so tutorials from beginning on with no knowledge up until um, even intermediate. And I also started uh, a YouTube channel recording my development uh, process. And I'm also part of uh, the server-side Swift conference that will happen this year, the first time in September in Berlin. Stefan is also part of it and one more guy and a shameless plug here at the moment. Um, that's the time where you would go to serviceitesoft.info and you can just sign up for getting more information about this conference. And we have already have some known sponsors here and are about to get <coughs> even more things on board. So now to talk. Perfect meets Kutura meets Vapor. These three things are what are they? They are actually just server-side Swift frameworks. They solve all the same problem. We all love Swift and we all uh, can now, due to them, also write Swift for the backend. Now, the question is, if you want to start, well, <laughs> which one do you pick? <laughs> which pill, like, they are all immature already. Like, you have, they are all production ready. You can use them in production. They have a community behind of them. They have documentation enough so you can run your application. They have tutorials and they have even books. Like Vapor is just about, they have already pre-release and have another, they have two books actually. Kitura has a book, Perfect is about to get a book. So they're all mature, um, but well, let's just see some code because talking is cheap so you can get a like roughly grasp of each framework, how they feel like if you would start um, with them. Because for me, for my part, I started w with one framework, and if I would not, if I would not do this talk here, I would not have had a look into the other frameworks. So that's why I want you to see what they all are about. Let's start with, per uh, with perfect. By with perfect, you would just, if you want to start off, just clone a template that they provide. So all you do is just good clone the perfect template. You go into the project, generate the project. And boom, you get a main.swift file with that code inside of it. It's not like you don't have to care about anything about that, just about this part and this part. Because for your backend, you want to define the routes, right? The URLs where, which you would hit as an API, for example. So you would define your API routes here. And then you would say which function has to be executed if that route is hit. And that is this one. I mean, you can name it whatever you want. And that is the default template that will be provided and will get you a hello world right away. So you could, you could even follow along and just get hello world running uh, with perfect. So that is if you would want to set it up and get it running. Now the, uh, the most used case is returning JSON. Um, so you would have an API and you want to return JSON. How easy is it? Well, in perfect, you would actually have you will define another function and another, let's say, slash JSON and say, yeah, execute that function, please. And all you do is, since that function signature, this is always the function that looks always the same for each um, request that is made. And you would actually take in the, uh, the response and set the body to JSON. And um, perfect is very dictionary, so you would use a lot of dictionaries. Um, if you go with that framework and all you do is just like setting a key a value I didn't do anything for catch here and then you say response completed you don't return anything so that is actually very um, like to it's it's uh, it's something that uh, is, has only perfect so they don't return anything they just say response completed and what you get is a JSON response conference so side Swift so that is how you set up perfect and how you get JSON as a response in perfect. Let's go over to Kitura. How would you do the same thing with Kitura? So 
Well, they they actually provide a like Vapordo and like Jonas already mentioned a toolbox. So all you do is you create a a, a dictionary uh, like a, di a folder, and <laughs> you go inside that folder, and you just use that toolbox and say in it, and then you get everything you need. And all you do is just you have, you will have an Xcode project, also the template, and you open it, and boom, they have also uh, provided some code for you, so not, not a main.swift where you would type in new roots, but you would just have um, app.router.get, and you define your roots here, which is health by th in this case, and what you get returned at this uh, default thing is just um, a status that everything went all right, so there's no error, the server is alive, um, right? The status is up, so that is the default, the hello world of Kitura actually. And if you would want to return JSON with Kitura, you would do it that way. You would define another root, and you would say, okay, well, okay, for, for the response, send JSON, and then again, you just pass a dictionary in it, and that's it. So you would get the JSON date dot, and then whatever. So that is how you would receive JSON with Kitura. Also pretty straightforward. How would you do all those things in Vapor? So how does it look in Vapor? Well, in Vapor, as mentioned, we have also a toolbox, or they have also a toolbox. And so you use the toolbox and say, I want a new project, name it whatever you want, hello Vapor. And that, that one is right now temporary because I used branch beta. Um, it will take actually the template from Git repository from, from their Git repository, but um, if you want to write start off with Vapor three, which is right now as a release candidate tagged and not released yet, but will be probably in the next couple of days or even in a week, um, you will just speci specify branch beta and you will be set up with Vapor three. Um, if you would leave it out, you will be going with Vapor two, which is just fine. I'm using like two projects in production with Vapor two. Um, but yeah, so that is how you would initiate a new folder. And then you go inside of it and you say Vapor Xcode. It will generate the Xcode project for you. So, and then it will ask you whether you wanted to open it because if you generate it, you probably want to open it in the next step. And that's what you get. You get as well, just a router.get and you define your root here and it return the hello world. We don't really care about that part. So only that part is right now important because they also provide, as Jonas mentioned, um, a better way how to structure already the whole code. So you would define a controller and just say, okay, I initiate my controller class. And if I define roots, I will just execute the functions of the controller. So it's not quite important for, for the start. Right now, if you do that, you would get just a hello world. How easy is it to return JSON in Vapor? Well, since Vapor is incorporating Codable heavily, heavily they would have have you define a struct as a content? Jonas mentioned it already. Well, well, twice is better than once. And then you will just define whatever you want, name, date, message. And you would define another root, let's say slash JSON, and you would return a new instance of that object. I mean, you could do whatever you want. And since it is conforming to content, which is conforming to codable and whatever, and all this magic what, that is happening behind, um, it will be converted to um, uh, to JSON and as a response what you get is the name server site Swift the date 12th September until the 14th and uh, come and join us <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, how you would get uh, a JSON response in uh, Vapor so all of three frameworks <coughs> are as I said mature enough to build whatever you have in mind it's up to you whether you want to have let's say a little bit more a um, very edge, edge technology approach, which would be probably more the Vapor thing. They deal a lot of with futures and right now with Vapor 3, um, a little bit more conservative is perfect, where you would be if you are like from a C++ direction or whatever, um, which I don't assume we all write Swift, right? So, so you will just have to choose between of them. And then uh, the question in the beginning was how to choose the right one? Well, you can't choose the wrong one if you don't choose the framework at all. Um, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
That was all the three, three frameworks. A little grasp for you, and thank you.